The rice needs to be rinsed clean after being soaked for three hours. Long grain rice must be used for this recipe as it has the necessary hardness to it. What are you doing now? Spin drying? Yes. What is the purpose of doing this? It's to remove all the water from the rice being milled and turn it into powder? We call this rice starter dough. Rice starter dough? Yes, the same idea as making glutinous rice balls. Will this be completely pulverized? Yes, it'll become powder. So you're virtually making a pot of paste? Yes, steaming hot paste for heating the rice dough. To enhance the stickiness of the rice dough? That's it. Just so when you make the rice noodles, they won't be so brittle? Yes, so they can be long threads. This step is very crucial then. The heating, yes. Thick rice noodles actually mean rice through the sieve. But the way sieve is pronounced in Taiwanese Minan dialect happens to sound like moss in Mandarin. So people often made the mistake by writing sieve as moss. The sixth of the sixth lunar month is the start of the minor heat. Whether you cook noodles, rice, or anything, Farmers lose their appetite because of the hot weather, so people prepare thick rice noodles for them to eat. At many Hakka restaurants in Taiwan, we can find stir-fried thick rice noodles on the menu. Their texture is similar to that of Hakka flat noodles, but they are thinner because of being pushed through the sieve. The sieve has a fine mesh, so the noodles produced will have two tapered ends. In Southeast Asia and Hong Kong, they are known as rat's tail noodles for this reason. It just doesn't sound as appetizing as sieved rice noodles. Every morning begins with stewing masona. This furnace must be kept going. Ah, how long does this need to go on for? Usually well over 10 hours. The sixth of the sixth lunar month is minor heat. Back in the days of farming in the countryside, workers were hired to reap rice. It was unbearably hot working in the rice fields. So, workers were mainly offered thick rice noodles or grass jelly as snacks. Thick rice noodles are easier to make as they are sieved. As for masona, if we spot it while working in the field, then we'll just gather it. After being harvested, masona is then dried in the sun. By summer, when helpers are hired to reap rice, dried masona will be made into grass jelly for the helpers. Masona leaves contain a gelatinous substance. This tender leaf gets torn when being rubbed. When you cook it, it also breaks down easily. By comparison, this other leaf is thicker and different in color. The leaf is aged around the edge and less likely to tear when being rubbed. It contains more gelatinous substance than the tender leaf. So you'll stew their stalks together with leaves? All together, they need to be half and half. Half of each, I see. You won't get the best out of Masona stewing one without the other. Boiling stalks or leaves alone will not give the same aroma. I'm pouring in alkaline water. What is this alkaline water used for? This is water filtered through the ashes after rice straw has been burned down. It helps release the pectin in Masona. Another function, mm, 
is to cause the starch to expand. By means of a natural process? Absolutely. It works by the same theory as tofu jelly and fig jelly. When I used to sell fig jelly, it wouldn't work with pure water. Well, what is being added now? It's starch. So when this cools down, it will become grass jelly? Yes, we need to wait for it to cool down.